Hey, Dr. Matt here. When it comes to nutrient absorption, consuming more of that nutrient is not always better. Seems like it would be, but it isn't. And this is surely the case when it comes to iron, that mineral that is massively deficient across the world. You know, even in those who are very iron deplete and, and take too much iron or, or taking too much iron can actually make the problem even worse. Uh, in fact, you can suppress your body's ability to take up and store iron by taking too much and too often. Uh, even though it is the, the very thing you need, you know, you need this iron, but your body's saying, hold on. For instance, one study showed that uh, a six fold increase in iron dosing, uh, going from 40 milligrams to 240 milligrams a day, only resulted in a three fold increase in iron absorption. Is that crazy? So they only went from 6.7 milligrams to 18.1 milligrams, even though they're ingesting 240 milligrams. So the question is, where did all that other iron go? Unfortunately, it went about irritating their digestive lining. It went about promoting weight gain. Uh, it went about promoting inflammation and irritation in their body. Uh, it went about you know, creating massive dysbiosis um, in, in their gut bacteria. And eventually, that iron ended up in the toilet. At least we hope so. Otherwise, it could be stuck um, in their intestinal cells. So iron absorption uh, on alternating days has shown about a 2x or two times absorption uh, compared to daily iron supplementation. It's pretty cool, right? Uh, this is especially when we're supplementing with greater than 30 milligrams of elemental iron daily. So you look at your supplement and it says 60 milligrams. We'll make sure it's actual elemental iron and just not the whole um, you know, chelate that's in there that's making up that 60 milligrams. If you're consuming more than 30 milligrams daily, I, I cannot recommend highly enough to get your iron levels done at least every four weeks. Um, you know, the whole panel, the iron, the TIBC, the ferritin, make sure your iron levels are consistently going up if you're taking that much iron or, or more, than, uh, more than 30 milligrams. If they're not, then you're likely getting a significant irritant effect from the iron. And this really could potentially be, gr be a greater detriment um, than the benefit you're receiving from taking iron in the first place. If you're iron deficient, we got to get it. We got to get that taken care of. I mean, that, that is a serious harm to your body, but we don't need to do it by causing more stress in your system. You know, I've given uh, 60 milligrams of elemental iron using a, a specific hydrolyzed rice protein chelate uh, type of iron uh, in a few cases, but rarely is, is that necessary. Um, even with a highly absorbable type like that, um, you know, even in the most efficient cases, is that rare? I mean, it's rare that that I need that much iron or that taking that much even makes a difference. The key, of course, is we gotta use highly absorbable iron you know, in a, in a whole foods packaging so that um, you get what you get. Uh, many people I've seen all over the place right now are suggesting using 150 to 300 milligrams of elemental iron daily to increase ferritin levels. This is shocking to me, this is crazy. I think this is, this, this is, this is terrible for us. When you look at these people's labs, though, you see that their iron levels are hardly improving at all. You know, they're just barely going up and they're taking 300 milligrams of iron a day. Not to mention, they're usually having tons and tons of adverse effects in the process. There is no way you cannot have adverse effects, whether you're noticing it or not, if you're taking 300 milligrams of elemental iron a day. Iron supplements taken daily at a dose of about 60 milligrams have consistently shown to increase what's called hepcidin. Hepcidin levels shut down, the higher the hepcidin levels go, they shut down what's called ferroportin, which is a transporter uh, of iron uptake into the blood. So basically take ferropro ferroportin takes iron from your enterocytes and puts it into your bloodstream. Enterocytes are small intestine cells. So <clears throat> hepcidin levels, if you take more than 60 milligrams of iron, will be elevated for at least 24 hours after that 60 milligram dose. Uh, that means if you take another dose before 24 hours, you're not gonna get a bunch of that iron, right? So we gotta watch this dosing, this dosing strategy. If you're going to take this much iron, you would want to at a minimum, 60 milligrams, if you're taking that you know, 60 milligrams or more, you want to, you'd want at a minimum to take your iron every other day. 
but also you would want to not dose multiple times per day. That, that is crazy. People are dosing this massive doses multiple times per day because you're literally lengthening out the time that that hepcidin is upregulated. So this protein that tells this other protein to transport iron from your enterocytes to your blood is just getting turned off nonstop. Take iron daily or twice daily, you know, that does not offer more benefit. In fact, it is counterproductive at high elemental elemental iron doses to take iron uh, twice daily or to take just massive doses uh, without giving your body at least 24 hours to recover. Uh, And generally, just massive doses are are crazy, which I hope you're hearing this. The deal is iron absorption is so tightly, highly uh, regulated. This is because our bodies are are so wise and our bodies are well aware that iron is absolutely necessary for life. We can't live without it. We got to have it. It's so necessary. But at the same time, it is also toxic um, in excess. Uh, and that goes for excess that we've stored and excess that we're just pumping in our body. Iron, so iron is absorbed first off in the duodenum. The duodenum is the first part of your small intestine. Right away, it gets in there and it, it's put into your enterocytes, which are part of the intestinal lining. And then it's then transported from these enterocytes to the bloodstream by that protein I, I mentioned earlier called ferroportin. And this transporter, ferroportin, like I mentioned earlier, is controlled by that hepcidin. And hepcidin is created by your liver. And if, they're get, if, if it sees that there's too much iron that's trying to get into your body, then it will go out and just destroy that transporter protein called ferroportin. And guess what? Your iron is stuck. Even if you got it from your intestine into your intestinal cells, it's just hanging out there in, in your enterocytes. Uh, and this, this shutting down of the ferroprotein, you know, it stops the ability to transport iron out of those enterocytes or intestinal cells and into your bloodstream. And it doesn't matter. If you don't get bl- the iron into your bloodstream uh, to be packaged into ferritin, it, it, it doesn't help you out at all. So many iron metabolism researchers actually suggest that by taking these massive bolus doses of iron, you actually could potentially be causing toxic buildup within your enterocytes, those intestinal lining cells, uh, with these massive doses. That is not good for anybody. That's not good for you. Not good for your intestinal cells. Not good for your digestion. Not good for inflammation, generally in your body. So hepcidin is, is, is essential um, at regulating iron absorption. And if too much iron is being absorbed, more, more, more hepcidin is going to be created. And this leads to more destruction of that ferroprotein transporter and less curing of iron deficiency, no matter how high the dose you want to take. So I'm repeating myself because this is so crucial. So many people are not, not listening. The human body is so awesome. You know, this is why I highly, highly recommend that uh, you take physiological doses in the right packaging to get your ferritin level, get it up really fast, and get it up really efficiently without creating, you know, this undue, unnecessarily um, burden on your body. And it's not just a burden, you know, it's, it's an irritation. It's, it's a toxic agent. Uh, so often <clears throat> in our, I would say, American medical culture, maybe other, other countries as well, we think that if some is good, more has to be better. You know, let's just pump more in. We need iron. Let's just take as much as we can. But this, but this essential for life mineral iron, it doesn't work that way. It really is a prime example of optimal dosing, using and working along with the wisdom of our bodies uh, in the right packaging to get the results we need and to get the results as fast as we need them. Because our body is all about survival. And if we try to usurp its capacity to survive, it is going to punch us back hard and fast. And you're not going to get the results you want, no matter how much iron you take. All right, that's my soapbox. Please like and share this. I know it's going to be helpful for eons of people because I've seen people all the time coming in who are taking massive doses of iron, who do not need to be taking massive doses of iron. And I see people coming in all the time who are iron deficient beyond measure and they're taking the wrong type of iron and getting no results. Um, and having you know massive digestive discomfort, headaches, rashes, eye issues, all kinds of craziness because they're dosing iron inappropriately. So yeah, please tell your please like, share with 
family and friends, any athlete you know, you know uh, iron deficiency is the number one nutri- nutritional deficiency in the entire world. Uh, it does preferentially affect women. And uh, as I have five daughters, a wife, four sisters, a mom, I think that women deserve to feel energized and alive all the time. And optimizing their iron levels, like I've seen in my own family, has been a huge blessing and enable these ladies to perform at the level they know they should be performing and can perform at in life. So help your ladies out. Let's get the wisdom, the understanding that uh, getting our iron levels up to an optimum level, our ferritin levels up to an optimum level, you know, that, that 70 range, 70 to 100 to 100 range is, is, is super important. But it's also, I would almost say, more valuable to get it up the right way. Otherwise, we're, we're going to be causing destruction to our body over the long term. Right, talk to you guys later.